I self-identify as a skeptic, and I like to call myself an unbeliever or a non-believer, but I don't have any issue with people who actually want to follow a faith. I have no desire to go out there and insult their faith. I have no desire to even try and talk them out of it. Um, that's a personal matter, and I don't really believe that one can really know whether or not one is convince someone else of one's point of view in a metaphysical discussion. Um, but I had my crisis of faith that resulted in my present skepticism and present disbelief, unbelief, whatever you want to call it, in the common um, or fairly commonplace dilemma of the permanent hell that one finds preached in a number of faiths. I was raised in the Roman Catholic faith, um, or at least I went to Catholic school. I never actually had a great deal of religious instruction or observance at home, but uh, I learned a lot about uh, Catholic beliefs. And one of the ones that I found the most difficult, ultimately, to wrap my head around was this idea of eternal damnation. Um, it doesn't really prove that God doesn't exist, that uh, this idea of eternal damnation, but it does question the ultimate nature of God. Uh, it does throw that into question. And to me, the end result of my problem with any sort of permanent unremitting hell resulted in uh, questioning everything about religion and ultimately leaving it all together. Now, my reasoning is as follows. It is illogical, in fact, it's impossible for a human being to commit a crime serious enough, to commit a sin or an abomination uh, serious enough to warrant an eternity of amplified, pure, distilled essence of punishment, of agony, of suffering, of pain. A human being, a limited human being, simply doesn't have that kind of power, that capacity to do something so horrible as to warrant um, an eternity burning in hell, however you care to describe hell. Um, Godwin can help us here, for once I pronounced his name correctly. Um, let's say Adolf Hitler, shouldn't he be cast into the fiery furnace forever. Well, I would say, okay, if anyone uh, is sort of a good candidate for eternal damnation, it's a, a fellow like him. But when you think about it, um, let's say um, 40 million people perished in the Second World War and upwards of 10 million in the Shoah, the various holocausts that took place. Um, say another hundred million people had their lives wrecked. Um, well, one could say then, I don't know, 150 million people were irreversibly affected by things that Adolf Hitler set in motion. After 150 million lifetimes in hell, hasn't Hitler paid for his sins? 150 million lives of being burned to a cinder, having his skin ripped off, and molten lead poured down his throat, and hot pokers stuck in uncomfortable places. Isn't there a point at which one can say that, okay, no matter how bad what he has done is, okay, now if we add up the suffering that he's caused, he has now sort of worked it all off. Okay, 150 million lifetimes isn't long enough for you? Why don't we multiply that number by a million? Because at the end of the day, when you're comparing any number you come up with to eternity, it all just ends up being sort of meaningless. Um, there is eternity and there is non-eternity. Eternity in hell is simply illogical for a moral God. It just can't be done. Uh, it doesn't add up. <clears throat> I pictured myself as a, a junior high school student 
talking to God, believe it or not, and sort of pointing down into the pit and saying, look, so-and-so down there who committed whatever sin he has committed has been sitting down there for five million years. I honestly think, and I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job here, God, but he's paid. How could he possibly, you know, why would you want him down there any longer, whatever it was? Say he murdered somebody or whatever, committed some terrible, horrible transgression. And I just pictured God saying, nope, he's never coming up no matter what. And I remember thinking, that is spite. That is petty. That's not a loving God. Or maybe he loves 99.99999% of the human race. But just like if, you, if a human were to save one life, you've saved the world entire. And when you kill one person, you've killed everybody. If one person is in hell, or it seemed to me, and it still seems to me, if one human being is in hell for all eternity, we may as well all be. That's the reasoning that sort of set the gears running that culminated in my present position of total skepticism and disbelief. Um, again, it's not fair to say that most, or that all theists, or all even Islamo-Christian, uh, Judaic uh, uh, practicing people believe in a permanent hell. A lot of them see it just the same way I do, that this is illogical, that there, there shouldn't be a permanent hell. Um, the Hindu faith seems to preach, or you know, certain schools of it preach, that you're in hell as long as you feel like being there, um, because ultimately we are all where we want to be. Um, or you're there until you've learned your lesson, but inevitably we all end up in something that could vaguely be called heaven. Um, and many other faiths also reject this idea of an eternal damnation. But the ones that say um, damnation could potentially be eternal are, if you ask me, creating more problems for the existence of a moral God than they realize. Um, fear and faith are mutually exclusive. You cannot have faith in a God that you simultaneously fear. They are the opposites of each other, faith and fear. If there is even the remotest, tiniest, most far-fetched chance of ever, of ever ending up in hell, you've got something to fear. You've got something awful to fear. Um, there goes your faith. And it's ironic that I sort of, even as a teenager, I remember thinking along these lines, well, me challenging this and saying, God, I'm going to challenge you here, and I'm going to say right to your face, I don't think that you're good. I don't think that you're as moral as you say you are. And I'm willing to bet that I've got you wrong, that we've all got you wrong on this hell thing. And I'm willing to put my eternal soul on, on the line for that. Um, because ultimately, if we're wrong about God, if those of us or who believe or believed that God is all good, and there is a permanent hell down there, who ends up there at the end of the day is random. We are either what God made us, or we're what we became as a result of things that have happened to us. Um, if I end up in hell because I'm just plain evil, I got that way either because A, God created me that way, or B, things happened to me which broke me to the point where I succumbed to the worst sins imaginable. Either way, um, God had at least a hand in creating the circumstances by which I was cast into that fiery furnace for all eternity. I'm sorry I don't buy that, and as I say, if this means that I'm going to hell when I die, and, and I've thought about this, if this means that um, just because I'm using the faculties that were given to me by 
this alleged creator, that I'm going to be cursed and damned for all eternity, then the god that people wanted me to worship in the first place looks more like Satan to me. Thank you.